So we're talking about yet again another losing streak today. And this team actually started off the year 3-0. and And then they had a little bit of time off. And by a little bit of time off, I think almost a week between their games. And I think that may have killed them. We're taking a look at the St. Louis Blues today. Uh, they're one of the teams who has lost six straight games. They have looked absolutely awful uh, in this stretch here to start off the year. And it's crazy thinking that this team was so dominant early. And now they're so terrible. They just do not look good at all. Uh, yeah, no, they look horrible uh, through their first couple of games here. So starting off, with our, we're going to look at their last six games. Uh, we're going to look at, you know, last six games, what happened, and categorize those teams as whether or not they're good teams or bad teams. So starting off here, uh, they lost 4 nothing against Winnipeg uh, to lose their first game of the year. It wasn't, it, I mean... 4 nothing's bad, but, I mean, like, they were going to lose at some point. So, I guess they kind of just chalked that off, and then things got bad. They lost to Edmonton 3-1. to They lost to Nashville 6-2. to They lost 7-4 to to Montreal, which is, no, nah, that's not good. Uh, and then they lost 5-1 to against Los Angeles. And then they lost 5-2 to against the New York Islanders. So, they're on a six-game losing streak. They are second to last in the NHL, second to last. The only team that is worse than them is the Columbus Blue Jackets. Yeah, that is uh, not a good look. 100% for the St. Louis Blues, a team that was looked at to be good uh, this season. And of course, the one year that I rank them good, they do their starting off the season bad. Just, just yeah, just like, just of course. And for those who don't know, I had St. Louis 7th. Uh, in 2021-22, and then they finished second, so whatever. Uh, it just didn't look good for me at all, uh, and it's not looking good for me again uh, so far this season. So what is the problem? It, it's it's pretty easy to kind of pinpoint uh, a couple of the problems that could be in play here. So first off, we're going to be touching base with this graphic a lot here. We're going to bring it up a lot. Who's to blame? And you can see a lot of stuff that I have popped up here. I'm going to look at opponents first. We're going to go through every single topic in depth here. So opponents. We already mentioned uh, who they won and lost to. But we're going to take a look and see, like, oh, are they good teams? I would say that four of the six teams that they have played are good teams. I'd say, Montre I'd say Montreal and Nashville are the only two teams that have looked eh, not that good uh, throughout this stretch. So obviously those are the two teams. But apart from that, uh, Winnipeg, Edmonton, LA, and New York have looked good. So that, that kind of is what I'm going to factor into, uh, the losing streak here, but still though, you still shouldn't be losing some of these games. The Blues are a good team. Uh, honestly, they're better than the Islanders. They should be better than the Kings. They should be better than the Jets, but like, I, I it's just, I don't know. And you go to the next one, you look at the players. This could be pinpoint in a lot of areas. Uh, for who's at fault here. And there definitely is some troubling playoff stats. Or player stats. Not playoff stats. Uh, starting off with Jordan Cairo. Uh, he has scored three goals and that's it. That is literally it. That's all he's done so far this season in nine games played. He is a minus 15. We're going to get into a lot of troubling uh, plus minus stats. Yeah, it, these are not good at all. Uh, O'Reilly, one goal. One Singular goal, and that's it. And he is a minus 12 in nine games played. Talk about how O'Reilly's this defensive forward and an amazing two-way guy, and then you see this. Oh, <laughs> that is not good. Uh, Barbashev, um, he's one of the players that is struggling points-wise. Uh, he has one goal, two assists for three points in nine games played. He's actually the best player that I have listed here. In the plus-minus category with a plus-one, he's looked okay in that remark, but he's looked bad points-wise. He's been struggling to get off the ground. Uh, Brandon Saad. Um, now, I'm not going to go too in-depth here with Saad because he has zero points, but he's only played three games. He's not played as much as the other guys. We don't have a big enough uh, sample size, so obviously there uh, he's, he's in a different category. But he is a minus-two, so he still statistically is bad. And then you go and look at some of the other players like Tory Krug, who is good points-wise. Two goals, five assists, seven points. But a minus 11. 11. 11. Yeah, I know. 
It's, no, that's just not good for a defenseman. 100%. Like, a lot of really bad plus minus stats here and it's not looking good for some of these players early on and you look at Cairo again Cairo is going into an eight-year deal worth if I'm not correct around 50 60 million dollars he's putting up three goals in nine games not good just not good at all uh definitely not for Cairo uh Jake Neighbors one of the rookies that is coming into the St. Louis lineup this season uh he has one goal uh, through nine games played, and he's a minus eight overall. Yeah, not good for the rookie so far. Uh, some of the other negative plus minuses that I've seen, excuse me, uh, Pareko is uh, is minus eight, and Shen is minus eight as well. So definitely uh, not good there for the players that are slumped. Just a lot of really bad stats. Yeah, that kind of what it is. That's kind of what it chokes down to here. Really bad player stats. And when you look at the goalies. It's worse. It's it's way worse. Uh, Thomas Grice, the new goalie that has come in for Villa Huso, 0-2-0, a 3.28 goals against average, and a .915 save percentage. That's actually relatively better uh, than people may have thought uh, Grice would be uh, through this just abysmal six-game losing streak. Uh, he's actually looked okay despite being 0-2-0, and mind you, he's only played two games. That's why his stats are kind of above you look at Jordan Bennington, who was 3-0 for, for a little bit there and then kind of just fell off a cliff, uh, as many people have expected. 3-4-0, um, a 3.40 goals against average and a .879 save percentage. They aren't drastically bad stats, but they're still bad. Just not, not good stats for a goaltender whatsoever. So you go back to the who's to blame. Is it the players? You could definitely factor that in there 100%. Is it the coach? Is it Craig Berube's fault? Is it time for a coaching change finally? Now, Craig Berube was obviously hired uh, during the Blues Cup run back in 2019. We're, we're about three years later. Is it time to fire him? I don't think so. I don't think this is his fault entirely. I look at the players, I see them struggling here. If this losing streak goes on a little bit longer, or let's say they win a game and then they start losing again, maybe. Maybe then you should factor it in. Maybe you should uh, consider firing Coach Craig Brubin. I think there's a lot of teams that are considering that, uh, considering firing their coach right now. But I don't think St. Louis should. Definitely not. Uh, and the other one... Is it just a rock in the road? We all know that episode. Well, I know that episode from The Walking Dead where they talk about how, you know, they're trying to get the kingdom, the team up to fight the saviors. We're talking about that rock in the road. It was one of Rick's stories. Anyways, for those who don't watch The Walking Dead, you have no idea what we're talking about. But anyways, is it just a rock in the road or just a term, just a bad slump in this season? That could be it. I mean, like teams have suffered bad losing streaks and then made the playoffs. The Flyers are a prime example of that. Uh, they lost 10 games in a row one year, and they still made the playoffs. Um, they've also won 10 games in a row and missed the playoffs. So, I mean, that's a whole different story. But, yeah, uh, the Flyers also did lose 10 games and 12 games in a row last season. But this is the Flyers talk. Um, could this just be a rock in the road? Honestly, could be. We could see this team turn it around. Uh, I mean, hey, they're only nine games into the year. It's not like they're 20 games in and they're losing six straight just right now. Um, I still think they have a lot of potential to turn this around, but I am going to look at 2019 because we saw this similar instance happen in 2019 with a similar team. Um, obviously, the Blues were like last in the league uh, by the new year, and they hired Craig Brube, Jordan Bennington came into play, and hey, they won the Cup in June. So anything can happen uh, looking at this Blues team. So to choke it up, is it the opponents they're playing? Is it the players? Is it the coach? Is it just a rock in the road? I really don't know. Uh, when you look at their next six games, I don't really trust them turning this around. I mean, I kind of do. It's kind of a half and half schedule uh, when you look at their next six games. Uh, they play Boston tomorrow, or today, technically, the time recording this video, it's tomorrow. But today, they play Boston. Uh, then they go to Philadelphia. So Philadelphia could be interesting. They're a team that's kind of eh. Philly's like a team that you could beat, but they're a team that you could lose to. It really depends. Uh, I don't know where to really think of where Philadelphia is at as of right now. Uh, San Jose, definitely a bad team. They should beat them 100% if their losing streak isn't already beaten by now. They should beat them. Uh, Vegas, 
yeah, they're second in the league. I don't know if you can beat Vegas if you're playing like this, but I mean, hey, they're playing Colorado then, and then they go to Chicago. So they do have some positive games in there, but we'll see uh, if St. Louis can turn this around. But anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you all very much for watching. For our supporters later, really do appreciate. Make sure to subscribe down below if you are new. But anyways, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.